here will hold no fears for him. And down there is Sean Kelly, who's now settling into the climb nicely, but he doesn't seem to be moving with any great fluidity, Paul. Well, I think what's uh, probably resting on Sean's mind at the moment is the fact that he's ridden the World Championships just two days ago, and that was 170 miles. Finishing third was a big disappointment, but also the, t the tiredness and the fatigue will still be in his legs a little bit. He too riding his spare bike today, because like Martin early, his bike was also badly damaged on the air flight over here. So Kelly might feel a little bit disturbed mentally about that. He's a man who is very particular about his equipment. Interesting thing there is, Phil, this part of the climb, Kelly's just put it onto the big, grip, big, the big ring, which most of the riders in the, uh, in the past so far have used a small ring and uh, forced the way up to the top. But there you can see Kelly's on the large chain ring. What a strong man he is. Trying to keep a high tempo going. He knows of all the riders in this race just how valuable seconds uh, here are in a stage race at this distance. Concentrating the occasional glance up front just to see where the finish might be for Sean Kelly. Still plenty of strength in those big legs. He's 33 years old now, Sean. Let's go back down to the start while Kelly continues his climb to the summit. And this looks like the legs of Robert Miller. Robert was telling me today that he's never been to Dundee before, which is rather surprising, of course, because Robert comes not far away at Glasgow going home tomorrow but right now he's got to face the climb of the law the man who won that, that marvelous stage of the tour de france at super bannier while miller makes his start we join kelly again as he approaches the line here now well one would have expected kelly to challenge paul curran whose time has withstood at least 40 riders since he finished well, it's amazing the power of this man because he's still keeping the big gear going around over the top as we keep uh, coming around to the top of this climb, which a lot of the French riders here are comparing to a miniature Puy de Dome. It goes round in a corkscrew to finish on the top of the law. So, Kelly, how nice it is to see Sean Kelly racing on the British roads. He's built his reputation in Europe and we only occasionally get to see him racing over here. And now he's giving this one last good dig as he tries to accelerate round the bend up towards the finish. Sean Kelly trying to save a few seconds here. It's really hurt in this climb, you know. He's put a lot of effort in. It remains to be seen what the time will tell us as he comes up, but he's already outside Paul Curran's time. That's how good Curran's ride was. Kelly only 10th best, 69.78. So Sean Kelly will not be over pleased with that. And he certainly looks to me as though he's taken a bit of pain as well on the climb. So the star of the Dutch PDM team reflecting a little bit on that ride. He's lost nine seconds then to Paul Curran. And of course, we still have Robert Miller and Malcolm Elliott to come up of the noted men. And here is Robert Miller on his way up towards the top. And Paul, you were with Robert Miller as his manager in the World Championships a couple of days ago. Tell us about that. Well, Robert was very motivated for the World Championships. Again, I think like Sean Kelly, he was a little disappointed with his performance, probably affected by the fact that, by the, fact that the rain came down at half distance. Robert really doesn't like racing in the rain. It had been 35 degrees up until that time. And uh, really, when the rain came down, it affected a lot of riders. And Robert here would really like to put a good performance in in Dundee on his hometown, of, in his home, home ground of Scotland. Well, there we are, Miller with his long hair waving in the wind. But as Miller approaches the finish, uh, Richard has found Sean Kelly, who now has finally got his breath back. Sean, hard work coming up that hill. Yeah, it's a very difficult prologue. It's not really a prologue, it's a hill time trial. Or a, uh, let's call it a hill prologue. I haven't seen many prologues as difficult as this. Happy? Tenth overall, as of now? It's enough? Yeah, oh, tenth overall. First thing is, yeah, after the World Championships on Sunday, getting so close. And, yeah, although I finished third, which is a good place, but it's really, I think, the most disappointing place, because when you finish second or third, and especially it was 
as it came down to a sprint. I was very disappointed in the morale is it's difficult at this moment, the morale is low and uh, I think it just gets started into this event, I think, you know, from t- from the time uh, from tomorrow on will be better. Well, this is Malcolm Elliott, the rider who starts last by the virtue of the fact he won at the Kellogg's Tour of Britain one year ago. And now he knows the time to beat is that of Paul Curran because he's been told. Now, can he do it? Well, I must say that that interview there with Sean Kelly was rather emotional and quite clearly Sean is upset. This is Reynolds finishing. 6-1.91 and Keith Reynolds has done a good one. Fifth place at the moment. So I think Keith should be quite pleased with that. This is Robert Miller now from our helicopter making his final turns up to the summit of the law. And he's found himself quite an acceleration. He looks here to be actually going a little bit quicker than Sean Kelly. Well, if any prologue uh, in the world could have suited Robert Miller, this is the one. And he's really fighting all the way up to the top. It's a difficult climb to judge, as Sean Kelly said earlier. You have to start reasonably quickly and save just a little bit till you get to the top and really accelerate. Miller sprinting here, as he has done on many stages of the Tour de France, to the top of a climb. Indeed he has, Paul, and the best this year, of course, at Super Bagnier, where he beat Pedro Delgado to the top. This time it's a Scottish crowd cheering him up. And, of course, Robert Miller, the only Scot, as he makes the finish line here now. He's still got to beat that magic time of six minutes by Curran. He's not going to do that, look. 67.92 for only 11th place then. So let's have a look at the overall situation so far with Malcolm Elliott still to finish. Paul Curran remains the leader from Pascal Lance, Laurent Jalabert and Martin Early in fourth place. Reynolds there in fifth. And this is Malcolm Elliott now, the only man who can upset the leaderboard. And Malcolm Elliott, like Paul Curran and like Keith Reynolds, a former British amateur hill climb champion. Now, can he pull off what would be a great result here for him? Well, as you look down at Elliot here, it's interesting to note that he's had two good stage races in his legs uh, this month. He won a stage in the Tour of Burgos and then went to the Tour of Galicia and won a stage there. This has been far and away the best season of Malcolm Elliot. He joined the Teca team this year. He won the points competition and two stages in the Tour of Spain. A little bit disappointed he couldn't ride the Tour de France, but it might well be because he didn't ride the Tour de France. He's now coming to this race fresher than most. He also, by the way, didn't ride the World Championship. And look at the ride. 5 minutes 48.99. Malcolm Elliott has wiped the rest of the race out of sight. I'm not surprised he could hardly get off the bike there. He's completely exhausted himself. But what a ride by Malcolm Elliott. He has gone over 11 seconds ahead of the next best finisher, and that will be Paul Curran. And there's confirmation of that. Curran is second, Pascal Lance is third, and Jalabert fourth, the two young professionals from Toshiba. And we have Brian Walton seventh, Mike Wilson gets ninth, Phil Anderson tenth. Listen, that's yellow now. Is anybody going to get it back off you? Well, I, I think... Uh... It's, I mean, I, I can't really wish, well, I mean, I, w- I wish for a repeat of last year, but uh, you can't expect it every year. It's, uh, it's the hardest thing ever to, uh, it's hard enough to win a race, but to, uh, to uh, keep the title is going to be even harder still. But uh, obviously I think I've got the form now. It's, uh, I knew today was going to be a good point or two form in this race, and uh, I, I did I really psyched myself up for this. But uh, we've got a strong team, and... Uh, We've got some hard countries to go over, but uh, yeah, I feel confident now. Having won this, I don't know what the margin was. What is the margin, do you know? Enough. <laughs> yeah, as long as just keep it that way to Westminster. <laughs> Malcolm Elliott enjoying the rewards of his day's hard labours. And if he stays in this sort of form, they're going to struggle to get that yellow jersey back off him. Before.